now going to be joined on the show by the voice of the Washington Wizards on radio, Dave Johnson. Dave, how are you today? Yeah, doing well. Doing well. We got it going last night uh, in Indiana. We didn't win. Uh, the Pacers, though, in some ways, it was playing a team last night that, you know, they went from 25 wins to 35 wins, and they're probably going to be a playoff uh, team this year. So, uh, you know, it was just good to, to, to get it going and, and, and start the journey. Uh, and, and that really is what it is with this team. It's, it's going to be a year of discovery. We've got new faces, new, new players, and, and uh, it's, just, it's just good to have NBA basketball back. Dave, Dave, let's, go ahead, Colin. Dave, Colin McLaughlin here. Thanks for joining us today. I know you had some time to watch this team in the preseason, but what were your first impressions on the team last night? Well, I think, uh, well, last night, uh, you know, it, it, we, we, we led early, and, and uh, uh, it, there, there was positives from, you know what, we're, we're going to get, we're going to be fun to watch when we get it going. We've got a lot of scoring potential. What, what hurt us last night was, uh, we do need to get better at, at transition defense, um, and, and we actually knew that going into last night's game that against this Indiana team. That man, do they like to, to get up and down? That that was going to be uh, a, a challenge, uh, and also that that the three point shot is is um, you know a part of of the NBA now. And and uh, what if you look at the stat sheets and the stats don't always tell the story, but if you look at last night. Uh, I think the Pacers finished with something like twenty threes, and the Wizards only made nine. Uh, and and so, at some point, it becomes a simple math equation. Uh, and this is something that that's 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 plagued the Wizards the last few years, where they just you know they've not made enough threes, and that's uh, they've got players to do it. Uh, he didn't do it last night, but they brought over Jordan Poole from from Golden State. Who uh, was it? Kind of in the shadow, and why wouldn't you be in the shadow of Clay Thompson and Steph Curry? But um, you know that's going to have to be uh, a part of the, the Wizards' uh, success story. Is is when, uh, like in preseason when they beat the Charlotte Hornets, when the when the three point shot is going, it, it's going to make life easier because this is it's a Wizards team. You can just look at the roster; it's it's not a, a strong rebounding team. So then you you've got to be stronger in, in certain other areas, and 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 uh, you know I think for them to be effective this year. Uh, that that three point shooting is, is volume, and uh, both uh, the number you take and the number you make has got to increase. Dave, you mentioned this is a team full of some newcomers. Jordan Poole, the big one in the trade, of course, the rookie uh, Kalabali from France is a guy to be excited about. I think with this team, then uh, Gallinari coming in. Don't know how long he'll be with the Wizards, but he's a veteran presence. Uh, What's your thoughts on, on some of these new guys and, and how they'll, uh, I guess, or what they'll bring to the Wizards this year? Well, you, you know, Bilal Koulibaly, I really believe, is going to be special. And, and let's face it, you know, he was a teammate of Victor Wembanyama in France. And, but all the focus was on uh, Victor Wembanyama. And I asked Wes Unsell, do you think, you know, Bilal Koulibaly kind of was off the radar because everything was all about uh, for every team and and and, and every uh, uh, you know fan, everybody was focused on Victor Wembanyama, and they weren't focused on who's this other kid uh, that, that's playing with him. Um, and he is a kid; he's 19 years old. But I was watching him, and I've never seen this in, in all my years. A rookie, and a 19 year old rookie at that, from a different country at that, um, and he just. This looks so comfortable, and the moment is not too big for him. Uh, and as Wes Unsell said, you know, they, they don't want to rush him along, but he keeps uh, advancing and, and keeps being able to accept and and take on more. And he's NBA defensive ready. Uh, I, I don't have the numbers in front of me last night, but, again, he had some block shots and steals, and, he, and as you guys know, uh, the, the offense, the defense, rather, is, is sometimes a big challenge when you come into the NBA. But uh, you know, from from the get go in preseason and, and continued last night, uh, it, it clear at the moment's not too big for him. So I, I believe that uh, as I was in Chirac watching in, in Toronto, one of our preseason games, I'm watching him and I'm thinking, man, he just he just looks like this. This is you know where he belongs. I'm thinking, you know, it, it, it will be this be the start of something special because this is what what happens uh, to teams that 
that do reach a, a, a certain level. You, you know, Nikola Jokic wasn't always, I'm not saying Bilal is going to be, you know, that dominant, but what I'm saying is there's, there's players that come into the league. Uh, and, and uh, at first Dirk Nowitzki wasn't, you know, uh, Dirk Nowitzki, uh, but, but there's that, that moment where you're watching him saying, you know what, five years down the road, I'm going to, am I going to remember this moment and say, it was the start of something special, and that's what you know. The Wizards, quite frankly, are hoping uh, that, that 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 they have in Bilal Kulabali. And again, I'm not saying one day he's going to be an NBA MVP, but I really believe that that it, 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 it's clear that the Wizards, who made a move to draft him, you know, credit their their scouting and their, their front office because. On draft now, let's face it. When that when his name was was tip, was announced, uh, it had everybody scrambling for Google and trying to figure out, uh, you know, all right, wait a minute, who's this guy and, and what's what's this all about? Uh, and it also sent a message that the Wizards were in it for a long term vision. Uh, as you know, look, we've been a team that that can make the playoffs for three or four years in a row, and you know, the first round, second round, that type of thing. What they're trying to do now is is sustain success, and uh, that means that the season might be bumpy. Um, but every team that is that has achieved sustained success, be it the Golden State Warriors, be it the Spurs, go right down the list. Uh, you, you have to go through that transition and be willing to go through that that transition and, and take some lumps. And that's what this season is going to be about: is, is is taking some lumps. That doesn't mean. Uh, that that uh, it's going to be a bad season. I, I, I just mean that it's not going to be about, I don't believe at this point, wins and losses, but it's going to be about what are we seeing on the floor and is this thing going forward to, to the ultimate destination we want to get to. We're joined on the phone line by Dave Johnson, the play-by-play voice of the Washington Wizards on the radio, which you can hear right here on Talk Radio WRNR 106.5 FM AM Channel 740 throughout the Wizards season. Dave, as you kind of just touched on, seems like this is a rebuild season for Washington. You look at the roster, a lot of new faces, no really box office ticket named players that jump out to you. You look at that, look at this team early on. What do you feel like maybe the identity or the strength will be of this team this year? Well, I, I think the, the uh, what, and I think fans can appreciate, that we all appreciate, or I appreciate it, certainly as a fan, and I think I'm not alone in this, is is you want to support uh, a, a team where every night they're, they're going to be, you know, they're going to be giving it their all. And, and what I believe we have a collection here is of players that are given an opportunity to show what can they do. Uh, Kyle Kuzma wanted to stay here. Why did he want to stay? He won a title with the LA Lakers. Uh, but he wanted to come to Washington originally because right, this is his chance to, to you know, be more. In LA, <laughs> with Anthony Davis and, and, and LeBron James, etc., uh, he accepted the role and he did the role very well. But all these players, you know, reached the NBA because at one point in their careers, <laughs> they were the man. They were the guy. They, they were the leader. Well, this, for Kuzma, this is a chance to lead. He had some options to go elsewhere, but this is why he wanted to stay here because, uh, you know, uh, this is where I can build my NBA legacy. Uh, Atias Jones, you, 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 you've kind of been in the, 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 the shadow of whether it's a John Morant in, in Memphis or, uh, you know, whatever. Well, now, okay, Tyus, here are the keys. You're you're driving the car. A very talented point guard. We mentioned Jordan Poole. Oh, you know, it's Clay Thompson and Steph Curry, and you know the, the Splash Brothers. They're getting the attention. Okay, you come to Washington, go. It's you. It's, it's show us, show us. And so uh, you can go right down the list. You've got young players. The one we just resigned, Denny Abdu, just got an extension of four years. These are these are uh, players that are, are given an opportunity to, to show what can you do and do it. There's no no uh, shackles on you. It, it's it's we need you to step up. We need you to take on on a bigger role. And so that's what I think you're going to find each and every night is is uh, you know. And this is something we can all relate to. 
uh, it, it, it's not about that, uh, it, it, the money. They, yeah, they're, they're paid well. The NBA is a good paying gig. We all know that. But it's, it's about, you know, this is their chance to really show what kind of career they can carve out. And I think, um, you know, we talked to Wes Unso Jr., our coach, about this. Uh, it, it's an interesting dynamic when you have that kind of hunger. Because that's the other thing. Uh, and, and I even talked about with Denny Obvio as he got a, you know, a four-year contract extension, $35 million. And he, and he was, look, it, 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 they're making good money no matter what their uh, uh, contract is, et cetera, et cetera. But they didn't get to this point uh, and this kind of success. Uh, because they were focused on money. They were focused on, uh, you know, being one of the best 500 basketball players in the world. Uh, and so, like, for Denny Avdi, he said, this shows me, this team wants me, I have to show them that they were right to want me. So that's, you know, this that's what this season is going to be about, seeing a, a bunch of guys that, yeah, they're all going to take their lumps, but they're, they're going to go out and fight and scrap, and we've soon, certainly seen that already, glimpses in, 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 the, in the preseason, even last night. Look, uh, it, 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 the game got away from them uh, when all of a sudden the Pacers started making a lot of threes, the Wizards weren't, and it turned late in the second quarter, and they never got back into it. Uh, but that's not you know going to be the way it's going to go for all 82. Uh, it, it was a reminder that, yeah, there are going to be some tough nights, uh, but but this team is going to be fun to watch. And that's something Kyle Kuzma talked about. He said, look, uh, you know, we have the ability to, to play fast, to play loose, uh, to get after it, and, and that's what we're going to have some fun enjoying, I believe. Dave, with all that being said, it's a new front office. He mentioned the Avdia extension, which uh, was maybe surprising since he hasn't quite lived up to what you would expect out of him, but I think he is only 22, so there's a lot of growth there. But also I think uh, the big thing heading into the season when you get a new front office is people immediately think, well, there might be a change at coach. Uh, They kept Wes Unseld for another season. Um, He's had back-to-back 35 win seasons. What do you think, I guess, the future of this team is with him, and and do you think he'll be here long-term with the new front office? Yeah, I, I think, look, uh, they, they signed him to an extension uh, as well. And I, I, I think they know that the pedigree he comes from is perfect to to, to, to develop this team because it's, this is not going to be a team that's going to contend for the Eastern Conference uh, you know, final this year or that type of thing. So, um uh, you know, changing it, it, coaches and changing things, you know, that's that's not the situation. You you don't have a team, um, regardless of where this goes, uh, that they'll be underperforming because, well, wait a minute, it's like a coach. You know, I've always said you change coaches uh, because you believe you have a team that should be doing more and somehow, for whatever reason, and it happens in all sports, the coach, uh, the old cliche, has lost the locker room. So that that's that's not the, the, the dynamic that, that, that exists. It, it, it's, it, we are at the beginning of, of, a, of, a, of a the thing uh, of a season that, that's going to be the start of even more change. Um, and I don't know what it's going to be, but it, as I think one of you alluded to, you know, how long is a, a Danilo Gallinari or a Mike Muscala going to be here? I'm not saying they're not, but but you know, there's there's pieces on this team that we could, or I say pieces, they're people, they're players. There's players on this team that, you know, we could get to a situation, as you know, get to the trade deadline and teams that think, well, wait a minute, you know, if we, we make one more move or get one more guy, we could strengthen our playoff run. Well, then maybe that turns into more draft picks for the Wizards. I'm just throwing out there that this is, it's going to be a fluid uh, situation. I think about that success the Knicks are having and, and, you know, they did it by developing their players, by having cap flexibility, which is what we have, the Wizards have. It's no longer a situation where you think, well, wait a minute, uh, the Wizards can't make any moves because all their money's locked up in two players or one player or, or whatever the story is. That's not the case. So uh, it, it's it's a fluid situation that it's identifying who you want to, you know, go forward with and, and who do you, you believe in and who are those, those pieces. Uh, and that's that's what we're going to discover this season. I think also with with uh, you know Denny Avdia, 
what they realized is that this is a player that, <laughs> let's face it, he was drafted and then COVID hits. He spends his rookie season with COVID. Uh, he ends up getting hurt, et cetera, et cetera. But he showed glimpses as, uh, well, more than glimpses. He, he's a flat out great defender, and he's and, and uh, what and he's, he can defend four positions. So in the NBA, that's a valuable piece. He's gone up to the assignments, and I, I did a, a thing with the other night with him and some fans. Some of the assignments he's been given are Giannis, and he'll hold <laughs> he'll hold Giannis to twenty five points, which is about the best you can do. But that's what my point is. He can do that, and, and the Wizards beat the Bucks in that game that I'm, I'm referencing. So. Uh, now it's a, it's about consistent playing time uh, and and developing his offensive game even more. That I think he's going to have a, a chance to show uh, this season. And and but as he talked about it, in terms of uh, his journey, you know, he gets here. There's COVID. There's coaching changes. I mean, when he got here, you know, this was a team with Russell Westbrook and Bradley Beal. So. That's where, while I just mentioned there will be some changes, it's, it's obvious that there's certain players that, that the Wizards might end up moving in the future. It's, it's not going to be uh, dramatic changes. We're not going to trade Kyle Kuzma in December or, or whatever is what I'm saying. So, you know, while, while there, there, there will be change going forward as you try to uh, achieve an ultimate goal of sustained success, there also needs to be consistency, and that means, uh, yeah, you don't start changing coaches if suddenly you're you're ten and twenty or, or or whatever, because that's that's not what this team is about at this at this stage. All right, Dave. Before we let you go, just give us a quick preview of the upcoming home stand to start off the season Saturday against Memphis, and then Monday against Boston. Well, and that's it. And then we're on the road, it seems like, forever. In fact, we only have five home games in November. So, uh, yeah, and, you know, it's it's a welcome home. And, you've, you've, you know, look, Memphis is, is uh, a team, uh, you know, obviously dealing with a lot because, uh, you know, the John Moran situation is, is, is still, you know, hopefully developing in a, in a positive uh, direction. But I, I think it, starting with Saturday, it, it'll just be good for this team to get home. They will be energized by the home crowd. There, there is a, there is no question of factor in that. It's even like last night we were in Indiana, uh, and I'm a, that I'm not saying that's why we lost, but you just you, you don't ever get a great feeling when you're at the other person's home opener. No, just like Memphis probably won't get a great feeling at our home opener on, on Saturday night, and you don't want them to. The, you know, the crowd will be buzzing. There's going to be a block party. Uh, starting at, at, at 5.30 at District E, which is a, a nice venue right next to the, the building. Um, so it, it's going to be a, a Saturday night jazz up, uh, a building, and, and, and hopefully the Wizards uh, respond with, with this exciting team that, you know, uh, will be exciting. And, and you want to see the best of what this Wizards team can be this season uh, on Saturday night. And then, of course, you know, <laughs> Boston, uh, you know, well, you get one of the best teams, I believe, uh, as they're formulating in the Eastern Conference. So, uh, you know, that's really a big challenge right out of the bat. And then it's then it's on the road again. So, um, you know, this is a this is not, not going to be an easy start to the season schedule wise because of the the road games, road heavy schedule in in November. But look, uh, watching this team and, and and being around this team, you just get a sense they're they're happy to be playing basketball and they'll be happy because they got their opportunity. I'm telling you, that's what it's all about. A Tyus Jones is saying, I, you know, I, I, I'm with the Wizards. I want to be here because I can run the show. And you can go right down the, the list. Uh, uh, Corey Chispert is saying, I, I shot 40% uh, from three-point distance last season. I'm going to do even better uh, this season. Uh, and I'm going to have the opportunity to do, to do better uh, this season. So, um, it, it's going to be about, it, it's a canvas that this team can paint its own picture and they're going to be given the opportunity. And look, people listening to this, isn't that what we want? We want a chance to really do our job, not be, well, I don't get to do everything because I'm not, you know, the, the head guy. I'm the, you know, assistant to the assistant to the assistant. Well, this is a chance for all these players 
to 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 write their scripts and let let's see where it takes us. All right, Dave. Thank you so much for your time, and uh, maybe we'll tune in again later, or we'll catch up again later in the season. But thank you. Look, look forward to it, and I appreciate our partnership with our folks in in, in Martinsburg. I've, I've been forced. It's been decades now, and uh, God, my, you could, my uh, uh, I remember dealing with Rick Wachtel years ago, a good friend, and just just great folks. And, and we appreciate when we when we have fans come up to us in the stands. And say, we yeah, we listen in Martinsburg, and as always, you can connect on Twitter if you like at Dave J Sports.